So we're looking at the uh, binomial theorem, and uh, how many of you have actually worked with the binomial theorem at all before? Okay, a little bit, all right. How many of you have heard of Pascal's triangle? Okay, that's kind of a more common thing you might have heard, or if you did it a little bit, um, you probably remember that. The question we're really trying to answer is, how is the binomial expansion useful? Um, it has kind of a direct use, and then there are some other uses for it as well, um, particularly in the area of probabilities. Um, but you'll notice there's a couple of terms that we're going to become familiar with. First of all, I mean, what is expansion anyways? Um, but what's a binomial coefficient? What's Pascal's triangle? And today our goal is to really um, explain the theorem itself and then uh, start to see some of the uses for it and some of the patterns in it that actually make it a relatively easy theorem to use. So first of all, here we have an expansion. This term expansion, when, when we're talking about an expansion, we're simply saying we have this binomial that's being raised to a power, so x plus y to the fifth. To expand it, we are simply foiling it out. Okay, We're multiplying it all out and combining like terms and simplifying them. Okay? Simplify is sometimes kind of a... Uh, difficult directive to, to understand because sometimes we're trying to simplify by expanding, sometimes we're trying to simplify in a different context by um, factoring it out. It kind of depends on what your definition of simple is in that context. But as you look at this expanded out, what patterns do you see or what what do you see here? As the powers of x like decrease, the powers of y increase. Okay, as the powers of x decrease, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then 0, the powers of y increase. So there are no y's, then y to the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Good. Lexi? Um, I noticed that the sum of the powers of x and y always equal 5. Okay. The sum of the powers of x and y always equal 5, which is the same as the power we're raising it to. Very good. Santiago? The bases are taking out of the Pascal's triangle. The what? The bases are from the Pascal's triangle and 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Yes, okay. The, uh, the coefficients, the numbers in front, are from Pascal's triangle. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, if you're familiar with Pascal's triangle. Good. Anything else you see? Particularly in relation to the coefficients, anything else that you see? Yes? The degree is equal to 5. Okay, the degrees add up to 5. Good. Anything else that you see? Alexi? Um, from the outside in, it's 1, 5, and 10. Okay, we've got the symmetry, right? It's the same on both sides. We've got 1s on the outsides, then 5s, then 10s. Okay? All right? How many terms do we have? Six. Okay, that's going to be a good thing to recognize as well because that's actually going to be consistent. If we're raising something to the fifth power, we're going to have six terms. If we're raising something to the tenth power, we're going to have eleven terms. So you're always going to have one more term than the power you're raising it to. Okay? So, just a couple of patterns we can see before we even really learn the theorem itself. Uh, that will help us as we start to use the theorem, okay? So let's take a look at what the binomial theorem says, okay? In an expansion, 
x plus y to the n. And it shows you the expansion. x to the n, it equals x to the n plus n times x to the n minus 1 times y, and then so on. Okay? In that expansion, the theorem says that the coefficient of a term that has x to the power of n minus r times y to the power of r is going to be this combination. n choose r, n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. Okay? So that's the coefficient. <coughs> now, notice this general term that they give us right in the middle. That's really, if you're going to memorize any one thing about this, that's going to be the thing to memorize. All right? Because that's kind of the key or the template to getting all of your terms. Okay? Let's recognize a couple of things about this. First of all, notice the n's are the power of x plus y. Okay, what power are you raising this to? It's the nth power. All right? Notice r is going to be the power of y, okay? And then, as, as a couple of you have recognized, these two powers will always add up to n, okay? In the example we looked at, the powers always added up to 5. And that's because we have r and n minus r, all right? You add those up, n minus r plus r is just n. So pay attention to what matches, okay? We're choosing r, y is to the r power. These two add up to n. n is the power you're raising the expansion to, okay? And we talked about combinations a little bit earlier in the year already. So you guys know how to evaluate combinations. But remember the notation here, we can also use n choose r in the parentheses like that, okay? So, let's take a quick look at some examples of coefficients. And I want to actually practice using or identifying a few things about these coefficients. All right. Just remember, I should probably take attendance. So we have 8 choose 8, 7 choose 0, 8 choose 2, and 10 choose 3. So the first thing I want to ask is, what expansion are these the coefficients for? All right, in other words, x plus y would be raised to what power? And um, as you look at this, if it's 8 choose 8, what's going to be the power of x plus y? 8. 8, all right, it's the 8th power. If we had a 7 choose 0, that would come from x plus y to the 7th power, okay? The 7th power. If we had 8 choose 2, that would come from x plus y to the 8th, the good, the 8th. And then finally, 10 choose 3. That would come from x plus y to the 10th power. Okay? 
So notice here what you're choosing out of is always the N. That's always the power of the expansion. Okay? Yes? Will the N always be the bigger number? Yes. You'll always have to have a... Um, I mean, they might be the same, but N is always going to be the first number. It's always going to be bigger than the second one. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. Now, here's the one you really have to kind of think through, and I want you to take a moment to think about this. Which term in the expansion does it belong to? We recognized that when we were raising x plus y to the fifth, we had six terms, right? Mm -hmm. So think about this. Notice we're going to start here, r was 0, okay? So we start at 0 and count up. So think through those. What term will it belong to? Let's see if you guys can get these. Okay, so let's think about it. 8 choose 8, which term does that come from? Or what does it belong to? Which one? Good, Cal, the ninth. The ninth, because if you're starting with 8 choose 0, okay, 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 8, that's a total of 9 terms. So 8 choose 8 is going to be your ninth term. Okay? 7 choose 0 is from your first term. Okay? How about 8 choose 2? It's the third term, okay? Because you start at 0, then 1, then 2. That's your third term. Okay. And then finally, if I have 10 choose 3, that belongs to which term? The fourth term. Okay, 0, 1, 2, 3. Fourth term. So, what do you notice here? The term number... is always going to be what? Yeah, it's going to be one more than r, all right? So it's, you could say it's r plus one. Or you could say r is one less than the term number. It doesn't matter either way you think of it, okay? Now this is important to get a hold of because as we'll see, and we're going to practice this part more on Thursday, um, you might be given an expansion, say, like this. Um, you know, 3x plus 2y to the 60th power. And you're asked, not for the entire expansion, thankfully, all right? But you're asked for, hey, what's the, uh, what's the 35th term? Okay. What would R be in this case? It would be 34. Okay. R would equal 34. And your coefficient would be 60. Choose 34. Okay. So you have to be real careful with this. Um, but what this allows us to do is then find just that one term in the middle of this big long expansion. And believe it or not, this is something that you'll be doing 
quite a bit, okay, and this is really where it becomes most useful, all right, because we have something called the binomial probability theorem, not just the binomial theorem, but when we start working with probabilities, there are certain circumstances where we can use these same patterns that we're looking at now to figure out the probability of a certain thing, okay, for example, um, Let's say in baseball, a hitter is batting 270. Okay, so they're getting a hit 27% of the time. Let's say in one game they get up to bat five times. What's the probability of them getting a hit three out of those five times? Well, we would have to use the binomial probability theorem to figure that out. Okay, and it's actually really good for letting us figure out probabilities of things that are repeated and how likely is it that we would get this outcome this many times all right so we'll look at that later but um, just wanted to give you a, a preview of what we can do with this all right the last question is kind of simple just what does it equal what does the coefficient equal? On the last term, 8 choose 8, what is that coefficient going to equal? 1. All right. It's going to be 1. It's always 1 for the last term. Okay. This one, if you just think through logically, how many ways can we pick everything? Because that's what this is, right? 8 choose 8. We're picking everything. How many ways can we do that? Only one way. Okay, how about 7 choose 0? That's going to be 1. There's only one way we can choose nothing. All right. The last two we actually have to calculate. All right, we have to work them out. Um, so, 8 choose 2. How would we set this up? How we set up a combination? N factorial. N factorial. So here it's eight. 8 factorial over 6 factorial, six factorial times two factorial. 2 factorial. There you go. 6 factorial, 2 factorial. Right, it's N factorial over N minus R factorial times R factorial. Okay, so that's the 6 came from the n minus r. And then what do we get? 28. 28, good. Because this, 8 times 7 times 6 factorial, the 6s cancel out, and that's just 4 times 7, which is 28. Is that how you the number that are like in front of the variable? Yes. Yeah, this is these are our coefficients. So, so this is how we'll uh, how we can get those. All right. So this is twenty eight. Go ahead and take a minute and figure out ten choose three on your own here. Ten choose three. So, so 
Should be set up. What does that come out to? 120. 120. 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial over 7 factorial times 3 factorial is 3 times 2. All right, so we reduce. Cancel out the 7 factorials. 3 goes into 9 three times. Eight goes in, or 2 goes into 8 four times. So it's really just 10 times 12, which is 120. Okay? So. Now the nice thing is, what we're going to do is look at a way using Pascal's triangle, like we mentioned before, uh, and also by looking at some patterns in this whole process that will allow us to minimize the number of times we actually have to work out the combination. All right, we'll see some, some patterns that will help us minimize some of how often we have to do that. Okay? All right, anyone have any questions? about the coefficients themselves. All right, so let's try expanding one. All right, we have three X minus two. We're gonna raise this to the sixth power. And you'll notice, remember I told you if there's any part that you wanted to memorize, it would be this general term right here. N choose R times a to the n minus r times b to the r. You can use x's and y's if you want for a and b, either way. Um, so let's think through our terms. I'll get you, I'm gonna get you guys started. I'm gonna let you guys work on it with a neighbor if you want um, to try to work out the rest of the expansion, okay? So just for the first term, it's n choose r. And the first term, you'll notice the two terms of our binomial are 3x minus 2. Okay, We're going to have 6, and it always starts with choose 0, 6 choose 0. We're always going to start with the first term at the highest power, so it's 3x to the 6th, and the negative 2 is to the 0 power. Now, I'm going to write it here just so you can see that, but you don't need to write it that, that way when you're working it out on your own, okay? But notice here, n choose r, we're choosing 0. r matches the power of that second term, in this case 0. And then these two exponents have to add up to n, which is 6. All right, so work with somebody and see if you can't come up with the other six terms that we have, okay? One thing to be careful about when you're multiplying it out, like here, if I have 3x to the sixth power, Notice both the 3 and the x are raised to the 6th power, okay? This is 1, 6 choose 0 is 1, 3 to the 6th power, if I remember right, is 729. And then you have times x to the 6th times, that's 1 again, all right? So your first term should be 729 x to the 6th. Okay, so make sure when 3x is raised to a power that you raise 3 to the power 2, not just the x.
Be real careful with your order of operations. How's it coming? We almost done? This is what you should have at least once you raise all the numbers to the powers and get all your uh, coefficients, okay? You can see here the coefficients, if you're still working that's fine, but try to listen to. The coefficients here are 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. Notice the symmetry there, okay? Notice here I raised 3 to the 5th power and got 243, 3 to the 4th is 81, and so on. Notice I'm raising negative 2 to the 1st to get negative 2, negative 2 squared to get a positive 4. Okay, negative 2 cubed gives me a negative 8. All right, so what's going to happen with the terms? Yeah, you're going to alternate. You're going to switch off the signs. You're going to have positive and then negative, okay, because that negative 2 alternates being raised to an odd power, 1, and an even power, 2. Odd power, 3, even power, 4. So odd and even with the negatives makes you alternate positive and negative. 
Now, just to get the final numbers here, because I hate to leave a problem unfinished, all right? What do we get for this second term? 486. <clears throat> what? 486. Uh, it should be bigger than that. Let them split the code. 2,916? 2,916? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think the problem is none of us put the coefficient, like the 6, 15, 20, 25. Oh, maybe some of us did. Yeah, we didn't know. I didn't know. What did you lose? What? I didn't have the 6, 15, 20. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's why we got 486 and like the small amount. That's right. Oh, you, you lost the uh, combination part. We never okay. put it in. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. The switching signs. Here, all right, notice, guys, negative 2 is the zero power, so it's just positive 1. Here, negative 2 is the first power, so it's negative for that term. Now, for this term, notice negative 2 was squared, so we have a positive 4. So all of this is positive, so it's going to be plus something. Okay. What's the number we come up with here? Don't ask. Four thousand eight hundred sixteen. Four thousand eight hundred sixty. Okay. And that's x to the fourth. So that's a positive value. Now negative two was to the third power, so we have a negative eight. That's going to make this entire term negative. And what do we get with that? 4,320. X cubed. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Nixon, can you scroll just for a sec to see the line up? All right, now we have this one here. What do we get? Uh, we have 15 times 9 times 16. 2,160. 2,160. And that's positive, okay, because now negative 2 is an even power, and that's x squared. And... Now we're to our yellow one. It's going to be negative because we got a negative 32. What does that come out to? 576. Okay. Others get the same thing? All right. And then our last term. Okay. Plus 64. And again, that's positive because now negative 2 is to an even power, the sixth power. I'm sorry. Yes. At the beginning, um, we're doing like the 6 and the 15 and the 20 and the doing six, That's what, that's where, let me get a highlighter here. Okay. The combinations that we're doing here. The binomial coefficients, 6 choose 1 is 6, okay? And 6 choose 2 is where we get the 15 from, okay? Doing your, uh, if you do your combination, 6 choose 2, 6 factorial over 4 factorial, 2 factorial, and simplify that, that would equal 15. Okay. This takes some getting used to, okay? That's why we're taking our time and practicing with it. Takes some getting used to. Alright. So, any other questions about this example? I'm going to give you a chance to practice a little bit more as we go on, okay, or later on here today even. Um, but let's actually take a look at Pascal's triangle. We've mentioned it a couple times. As you can see, 
figuring out all these combinations is going to be tedious. Okay? Um, so if we can minimize the amount that we have to actually do that, that's a good thing. Okay? So, Pascal's Triangle. It's called Pascal's Triangle because the guy who came up with this was called Blaise Pascal. He was a French mathematician, lived in the early 1600s. Well, early to mid 1600s. Um, looks like he died at age 39. So, 38 or 39. So, um, he came up with a few pretty neat things. Uh, Pascal's triangle, though, he realized if you take this binomial and you start raising it to powers, there's a pattern in the coefficients. Okay, and he just started with x and y, so there were no other numbers impacting the numbers you saw. Remember back here, the coefficients 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1 are there, but if you look at our final answer, you don't see those numbers anymore. Okay, so that's why he started with just x plus y, so there were no other numbers that would change anything. So he said, okay, well, anything to the zero power is one, so there's a one. And if we raised x plus y to the first power, we just have x plus y, and the coefficients stay one and one. So we kept going. x plus y squared foils out into x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And he saw the pattern... 1, 2, 1. So he kept going and going and going and going even past this. And you can see the pattern. He saw that, hey, here's a 1, 3, 3, and 1. Here's a 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Here's the row that we just used 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. And he started to look at patterns. He started to see relationships here, okay? And let me actually give you one where all the x's and y's are gone so you can just focus on the coefficients, all right? One pattern that he noticed, okay, was the fact that if you put them in this kind of pyramid or triangle form, a term will always be the sum of the two terms above it. Okay? So 4 plus 6 is 10. 15 plus 6 is 21. And using this pattern, we can very easily come up with more rows. All right? If I'm going for this one, 1 plus 0, okay, is 1. 1 plus 7 is 8, 7 plus 21 is 28, 21 and 35 would be 56, 35 and 35 is 70, 35 and 21 is 56, 21 and 7 is 28, 7 and 1 is 8, and then again 1 and 0 would be 1. So there's an 8th row. Okay. What are some other patterns that you see... in this triangle. Alexi? Um, the outsides are always ones. Good. The first and last, the outsides are always one. That's good. Okay. What other patterns do you guys see? What you guys? From the like, going horizontal sort of, it's like one, two, three, four, five. And then the second one is two, three, four, five, six. Okay, yeah, if you look along the diagonal here at the second term, all right, if you look at the second term in each row, it just counts up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, okay? And it actually matches the number of the row, because remember, this was the row 0. In fact, if you look it up, some people don't even put the 1 at the top. You'll see them, they'll just start with the 1, 1 just so that you don't get confused with the zeroth row 
Um, but it also matches, remember, with the power that you're expanding to. So uh, this is, remember, x plus y to the first, x plus y to the second, x plus y to the third, fourth, fifth, and so on. Okay? And notice that pattern also is seen in the next to last term of each row. Okay? So if you think about this, if you really understand this, you'll never have to do a combination at all, at least up through cubing things, if you just remember one, one is at the first and last, and then the, the power that we're expanding it to is your, your second and next to last term, or coefficient, you've got those. Here, when we're raising something to the fourth, there's only one combination that we would actually have to figure it out. Okay. Any other patterns you guys recognize? Second row goes plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six seven etc. It goes one three six ten fifteen. Okay, so there's a pattern there. That would be uh, you're adding two, adding three, adding four, adding five, adding six, adding seven, and so on. Okay, it's a good one. All right, you see the symmetry? So once I got to 1, 6, 15, and 20 on the example we just did, I knew it was going to go back down 15, 6, and 1, all right, because of the symmetry. And there's a lot of different patterns. There's actually, I mean, if you Google patterns in Pascal's triangle, you'll find all kinds of crazy patterns. Um, they're really kind of amazing to see. But, uh, wait, yes? How many tests did we memorize this? Do we also have to show us doing the combination the formula for all the coefficients? Well, here's the thing. If you want to use Pascal's triangle, you can, okay? However, if I ask you what's the 35th term of this expansion, how many rows of Pascal's triangle would you have to write out? Quite a few. 60, right? Okay. So there are going to be times when you practically, you just have to use the combination. Pascal's triangle is particularly useful, though, when you have these smaller powers. You can, I mean, once you guys get the hang of this, you'll zip, th zip out, you know, seven, eight rows of Pascal's triangle with hardly even thinking, you know. So... You know, you can always use it if you want, but there will be times where it's impractical to try to. So that's why we have to kind of learn it both ways. Good question. Any other questions? All right. Well, I'm a, I like technology. I'm not like always have to have the latest and greatest of everything, but I like technology. One thing Pascal actually invented, it's really cool. He looked 1600s, right? The calculator um, actually dates back thousands of years with the abacus, you know, the thing with the little beads. Okay, that was like an early calculator. He actually invented something called the Pascaline. It's kind of a cool thing. I'll show you a picture of it. I don't know if this was his original one or if it was a remake or what, but. He made it, it was a mechanical calculator, and it was kind of the predecessor to um, the modern day computer or calculator that we use. And if I remember correctly, I know it could add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and I think it could even do a square root. Just pretty amazing, because it was all gears. There was no, there was no memory, there was no like storage or calculation that way. It was all gears and and stuff and I have no idea how he did it but it's pretty cool uh, to think about he invented this thing that could calculate stuff um, that was one of the predecessors to the computer uh, before electricity was even really harnessed so it's kind of cool alright so there's your fun fact for the day
your history. For your practice, uh, there are some here that are just finding the coefficient initially, and then there are others. Please pay attention to the directions, okay? On these six, use the binomial theorem. In other words, use the combinations, all right? Practice using the combinations. And then here, you can just use Pascal's triangle, all right? But do be careful with your signs and make sure you actually calculate everything. Don't leave it as whatever to the fourth power. Actually figure out what it would end up equaling at the end.